Okay, I'm putting a face plate on it. I had a hole drilled in it and the worm screw, and it wasn't holding well. I was trying to cut a mortise on the end of it and shape it just a little bit, and it just started going wobbly like crazy. I think wobbly is a good word. So with the face plate, I'll take the, the worm screw out, and then I'll take the hub off, and... The face plate will hold it secure. It doesn't really matter that the screws are going into that part of it because that's going to be cut out for the inside of the bowl. But I guess I'm getting a little ahead of myself. This whole project was really just for me to test casting. I had never casted anything and had watched a lot of it and just figured out you know, things to do, things to not do, and just watch things like that. So this was casted, uh, obviously not in a round mold, but a square mold, and kind of learned my lesson on that. For a piece of wood like this, it'd be, a, it'd be nothing just to clean it up, but this is actually taking a while, and I'm running it at a high speed to give you an idea of how long it is. Actually, this whole video is probably four hours of, editing and cutting it down to about 20 something minutes but what I have here is a bowl that I put some pieces of wood in and put a little bit of color what I thought was a little bit like one drop of black and a bunch of drops of light blue and it, at this point I'm looking at it and thinking it's really dark and that it's not really going to work out. As a matter of fact, I was wondering if I was doing the right thing by recording everything and setting up everything. I thought maybe I should just do it and not worry about it. My first instinct on the shape of the bowl is I just wanted to get a, a just a decent, just a cereal type bowl and get it smoothed out. Well, I think the shape is okay now, and it just need to work on that mortise to hold better and to possibly put a little bit deeper. So we just need to clean up the mortise, make it a little tighter and a little deeper kind of sand the inside of it help out the depth on it also around the edges clean up the sides and kind of make it look better and it's looking a little smoother I'm wiping it with um, denatured alcohol and just getting the dust off of the grid. I think that's uh, maybe 320 or maybe it's 400. Now I got a little bit better view of cutting the mortise again. I just scribed a mark on there and that's where I want to cut it at. This was part of the problem in the beginning. It wasn't really deep enough, so this time <laughs> I've got plenty of room there, and I'm just going to go ahead and go as deep as I need to. And basically trying to get the angle correct. Basically what a mortise is, is kind of like a hole that is cut into it, but it has a taper on it, and that's what I'm actually doing right there is cutting an angle uh, on the sides and then smoothing it up with that brown handle. 
easy tool. And I, I use a parting tool to try to cut that angle. Man, I didn't like the way that felt. In fast motion, it's it's uh, it's really kind of funny, but and so now I'm unscrewing the face plate, which is just held on by four screws. And this is the part that you'll cut into to make a make an opened. And I, and I think it, when I turn it around, it was it was still wobbling a little bit. And sometimes you can just take it and turn it. It'll it'll line itself up, so to speak, or it'll, it'll just turn it a little bit better. Now I'm running uh, the Forrester bit inside of it to take away some of it. I felt like if uh, if it was going to be as stubborn as it is, I might as well take advantage of some bits that I'm going into it with. And I'm just trying to measure the depth that it needs to go. And I got to thinking I never did mark my drill bit, so might be a good idea to put a piece of tape on it. This time I'm going to go almost to the line. And I'm kind of glad I didn't go any further because that was actually as far as I needed to go. Well, the wobble is kind of aggravating me, so I thought I'd clean up the sides again. I turned up the speed because it was already kind of balanced. It just had a little bit of a wobble in it, and I just got tired of seeing it looking like that. As a matter of fact, if you're thinking about fast forwarding, this is probably the part that you might not want to fast forward. As I work down to the bottom of the bowl, um, I slow it down a little bit, and you'll see a, a chip come off. It was a big chip, and then I spend the next 20 minutes getting it out. But um, like I said, I, I'm going to slow it down, and it's just kind of a blue streak that goes by my hand. There we go. And I'm just barely cleaning it up. That was it. Never did find it. And wasn't real happy about it, but it, it I could almost put my thumb in it. It was it was big. So we're gonna spend the next period of time here just me really taking out a lot trying to get rid of it and stopping it. I don't want to take any more out than I have to. But now this actually changed the whole shape of a bowl. And this is really a good example of when you're turning a wood bowl and you, you're just not happy with the way it's going. 
and you're kind of in between going this way or that way and then you'll see something in the wood either the grain will, will shift you to do something different or a knot or just something of, of character that you don't want to take out uh, or maybe a, a piece of a knot falls out or something and and so you might wind up going deeper just because of that and this is what's happened here basically it's just had to keep going until there was no more chip showing I did get the microphone closer to me, so I'm hoping it sounds better. Some people were saying it was a little bit quiet or that I was a little bit soft-spoken, which my daughter made a point of saying that uh, she really liked that because she'd never really hear, heard me talk like that. I think my kids are more accustomed to the Marine Corps coming out in me than, than a lot of people, which is sad to say, but. They knew where they stood with me. The helmet is hitting the camera. That's what's making it move around like that. I really need to position it a little bit higher up. I hate to do that, but I can't keep bumping it. Maybe that'll help. Now, if you watch real close, it catches, and I'll slow it down. Actually, right there. And now it's all out of whack. And it's about to come off, so I'm trying to cut it off before it does. And I put it in and thought, okay, we'll just work with it. And the other problem was I did have the uh, bowl gouge with the irish grind on it. and It loves to cut, and I just decided to take the wood out with it. Just used it too long. For me, the scraper seemed to work better, or that piece. And even it just, I mean, it was, it was getting to where it just wasn't wanting to even stay in there. But, you know, we're going to trudge on and I'll just go a little lighter. Just trying to square that front up. Now everything's all out of whack. It actually looks worse in 
fast motion that it does at normal speed. But I'm happy. I mean, you know, I'm enjoying doing it. I just wish a couple of things would work better. I wish I would work better. But it gives you time to think about what's important. And right now what's important is me to get that edge straightened up so that I can possibly turn it around and grab it from the inside. And clean everything back up again. And maybe fix the tenon. I was thinking about a lot of things. I was also thinking about lunch. Which didn't help. But what I don't show is I, I did get that lip thin enough and straight enough and square enough to turn it around fix the tenon and then put it back around like this and I started cutting on it and then I realized I'd cut the camera off so all of a sudden now you see it like this but that was after lunch it's always a good thing to go get something to eat sometimes maybe when it's not time but still go do it get away from it What you kind of can't see is as I'm working with the sides, I'm able to, I'm standing above it and I'm able to see through it. And I'm like, you know, we're, we're at a point where it's, it's getting thin and there's also a groove. That's why I keep feeling there's a groove that makes that thinner. kind of wrapping it up and going to go with what I got. I thought about curving the base of it down, but I figured flat's going to work. I started back sanding and of course the camera was off and had to replace the battery, but I'm up to, um, I had gone from 400, 600, and 800 thousand and now I'm just showing what the that's a thousand and I should have gone to 1200 which I later did came back with a thousand and, and then did 1200 I actually had two two of them stuck together so that's why I pulled one of them off and then I started a polish that has a three part three parts to it and I've been using it for about 10 years with powder coat and this is after just the first polish it doesn't have a real good shine to it but it's starting starting to come around and uh, still has uh, small scratches and things in it and that's what the uh, that's what the the polish does it's actually a rubbing compound from 3m and uh, it's uh, a one two three step you can see where the wood was sanded pretty good and that's the first one right there. I, I, I don't know why I didn't pick it up. But then that's the second one. And I'm fixing to start with it. And it really starts looking better on the second one. And then the third one does equally as good. It doesn't take much. Maybe about a, about the size of a quarter. You got to remember this is, this stuff's used to do a car. So, um, you know, as a matter of fact, you can get more than a car out of one of these bottles. 
and I am using a rack. I know a lot of people think you, sh you shouldn't, and maybe you shouldn't. I didn't keep, I didn't have my hands wrapped in it, so if it did grab the rag, it, it shouldn't do anything. And, and I usually use a paper towel for wood and stuff like this, but I feel like you should be safe at pretty much whatever you're doing. Um, it's hard to get a car to spin like that so that you can buff it. <laughs> now, actually, I use a, a large buffer and these large pads, and you change the pads in between each of the uh, compounds. And I did the same thing with the well, with microfiber cloth. And I, you can already see that it's getting clearer and clearer. And it just takes about three to five minutes to do the whole thing with each of them. Well, I didn't pick it up and show you how clear it is because when I did it before, my monitor cable was still plugged in. And I kind of twisted it, and when I put it back in this position, I plugged the monitor back in, but I couldn't get it to come on. So I think I might have uh, messed up that little plug inside the GoPro, which are tiny anyway. Well, this is the third compounds that you put on to make things shine. It doesn't really take much at all. This third polish has more of the polish in it than it does the grit in it or cutting action. Well, I'd like to thank you for watching this video, and if you would, please subscribe and leave a comment. I need all the encouragement and help that I can get, so I certainly would appreciate that. Also, I've got a couple still shots at the end that are just different angles of it. It looks different from every angle, it seems like. I think it turned out okay for the first casting bowl what I wound up doing off video from this was I just put some uh, linseed oil on the different pieces of parts of wood that was exposed gave it a warmer feeling throughout the bowl I would like to mention my website it is cheeveswoodworks.com and then also our Facebook page is ChievesWoodworks.com and guess what our Instagram is ChievesWoodworks.com Please like and subscribe and leave a comment and if you don't do any of that just remember that God is good.